Yeah, hard as you may try, it's almost impossible to escape exposure to chemicals, be they in the food we eat, the clothes we wear or the air we breathe. Man-made chemicals are everywhere. That's right. In his book Poison Planet, science writer Julian Cribb argues that our chemical environment is making us sicker and the long-term effects may be devastating. Julian Cribb joined Dr Carl to discuss what's been called the silent epidemic. Well, there's a very large variety of human ailments, mainly the degenerative diseases, which are now being linked in increasing numbers of scientific papers to this avalanche of chemicals, 143,000 chemicals, 150 billion tonnes of chemical emissions from human activity. We're just being swamped in these things 24-7. You're saying 143,000 chemicals out there that we're exposed to every day, and that's what I see from, from food to the clothes we wear to the, the furniture that we sit in. There are 143,000 man-made chemicals, we're not exposed to all of them every day, but we're certainly exposed probably to some thousands of them every day. I mean, for example, on the highway, you might be exposed to six or 700 different chemicals coming out of the backs of vehicles. Uh, so, and you know, then when you eat something, when you drink something, you're exposed to more and different groups of chemicals. And some of these chemicals have the same effect or they attack the same cells in the body. So they have a kind of a combined effect. It's very difficult to, to track or to source a cancer or something like that to an individual individual chemical. Very hard indeed. But the concern is this just the, the magnitude of this combined chemical assault, which has really just arisen in the last 20 or 30 years. It was never this big and our ancestors never faced it at all. Dr. Carl, is, is there any coincidence that we're as Julian has just mentioned, we have this avalanche of chemicals. At the same time, we have increased incidence of, of cancers, diabetes, asthma, allergies. Oh, okay. So one at a time. Cancers uh, increase as the population age increases, so the longer you live. Asthma is tricky because asthma is not so much a disease, but rather a common symptom of a whole bunch of different respiratory diseases. But there, there, there does seem to be a link. The one that worries me is an example with BPA. Now, it's a chemical that's used to line um, tomato soup tins because the tomato soup is acid and will eat the metal. And so it seems like a good thing. It doesn't eat through the metal. And then they thought, oh, well, this is a bad chemical. And they thought about it again. They said, well, it's not so bad. And then they say, okay, well, now we do think it is bad. And then, they, then you think, okay, here's a chemical that took us 20 years to work out that it's probably bad. We're going to replace it with a chemical that we haven't vetted on the inside of the tomato tins, and we'll wait 20 years to see what that does. See, well, they're turning the us into human guinea pigs, aren't they? All the time. Well, let's just see what happens in 20 years' time for the next generation, see if it has an effect. Yes, and, and we haven't evolved to deal with these chemicals, and most of them, they're in low concentrations, but some of them, they're in higher, and some people are uniquely sensitive. Yeah, the issue is, uh, is mixtures. It's the mixtures of the chemicals that, that the uh, scientists are most worried about. Individual chemicals can be tracked to particular diseases, but it's the big picture, it's the forest that we're not seeing at the moment. Uh, this enormous volume of chemicals which are being churned out worldwide, and not only deliberately made, but also accidentally made in the process of doing agriculture or mining or something like that. Uh, Julian, it, it, for years, uh, for the past few decades, people have been worried about the pesticides, for instance, that we spray on, our, on, the, on the food that we eat, and there's been a backlash against that. We've had the rise of organic food. Does that make a difference? Uh, it may do. Uh, you have to be sure the organic food is actually free of, of chemicals. For example, if it comes in a plastic wrapper, you want to look very carefully at what volatiles may have come out of the plastic into the clean food. Basically, uh, pesticides, they've replaced the really toxic, um, you know, old chemicals like DDT with organophosphates, then they found they were bad for us, so they've replaced them with the neonicotinoids, and now they're finding those are killing honeybees, and heaven knows what they're doing to us. So you're getting this sort of successive replacement of chemicals by new chemicals that are generally more toxic, used in lower doses, uh, but we don't generally know the effect on human beings. Let's just take that example of plastic which you mentioned, and we are living in quite literally a plastic world, well, both literally and figuratively, I guess. So many things are wrapped in plastic, even the, the water and, the, and the, uh, the drinks we have are all, all come in plastic. Is there any definitive uh, science out there that proves that that will cause 
uh, health problems. There's a lot of chemicals called endocrine disruptors which dis disrupt the hormone system, the reproductive system, they can affect the brain in various ways and so on. They, they have been linked by laboratory experiments with things like the obesity uh, pandemic that's going on at the moment. In other words, you may be having your body's energy system scrambled in some way by these chemicals. But the answer is we, we have no definitive science on this because people haven't been looking. It's just starting to come through. Uh, and, and yes, we are chemicalizing our world. We are replacing all the wood and the glass and the natural fibers and things like that with synthetics made from petroleum. How then do you escape this chemical cocktail? How do you avoid poisoning yourself and poisoning your children? Parents and citizens who are concerned about this are sharing information at light speed around the planet now. So there is a generation of educated, um, aware consumers arising and they're going to start putting pressure on the dirty producer, the producers uh, who, who produce either toxic products or use co uh, toxic processes. And I think that it's going to be this kind of citizen reaction, people power, that will eventually change this. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Thank you, Dr. Andrew.